here we are guys we are heading to kentucky lake this lake has been world famous for crappie since before my time uh, we are going out tomorrow with uh, doug Wynn of crappie gills and more and mark riddle of uh, cornfield fishing gear we're going to pull some crankbaits right here on kentucky lake we're going to do our best to show you how I'm just now coming in, and I'm going to end up having to find a place to eat this evening. They've got a lot of great restaurants around here. Uh, Amazing Blaze is one of them, great barbecue. Got a catfish place right up here, the pond. And uh, we're, we'll probably end up running by High Tech Marine for a minute and talking to Matt over there. Matt's a great dude. He's got one of the best bait shops and such here. And we're going to spend a night here at Sportsman's Lodge. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm almost ready to pull up on it now, and you all get to see where we stay, where we eat, how to catch these fish with crankbait from one of the best in the business, Captain Doug Wynn. I'm excited about it, guys. Let's get to it. Hi, I'm Mark from Cornfield Fishing Gear on Kentucky Lake here. I love the crappie fish. I'm Doug Wynn, crappiegillsandmore.com from Benton, Kentucky. I guide here on Kentucky and Barkley and, uh, and fish uh, all three of the major uh, crappie tournament trails. Uh, I got into crappie fishing many years ago as a little kid and then got busy with life and work and hadn't fished for years. Met this guy right here about 10, <laughs> 11 years ago at a crappie.com event. Uh, got back into crappie fishing again, bought a boat, uh, made some things for my boat and Doug needed some things and a couple other guys around here needed some things. and. It's grown into cornfield fishing gear. As everybody knows, crappie fishing's just gone crazy. Oh yeah. And I don't see an end to it. It just keeps getting better all the time. I fished Kentucky Lake all my life. I fished Barkley since it was flooded in uh, 65. I've trolled all my life. It's something that uh, is a new tactic to a lot of people and that's, uh, that's how we've done very well on the tournament circuits and here on the lake. Uh, been guiding here on Kentucky and Barkley for a few years and, uh, and love being around people and love being around fishermen. What's up, Jeremy? Good morning, guys. Good morning, morning, guys. Good morning. I come down here, I brought that cold front with me. I reckon. <laughs> Good night. Got fog everywhere. Let's we'll see what we can do today. Yeah, well, let's go try it. All right. Yeah. I've spent most of my life chasing. Chasing success, chasing money, chasing respect. Truth is, nothing has brought me joy like being right here on the water. Rod in hand, hook on the line, chasing crappie. I am a crappie angler. These are our stories, and this is On the Hook. Kentucky Lake is a huge, huge lake. A lot of stake beds. There's more man-made structure in Kentucky Lake than I think probably any of the 10 biggest named lakes in the country combined. There are stake beds everywhere. Just pick a bay, you can go in there, find you 100 stake beds, and a lot of them will be holding crappie. You can do any type of any technique of crappie fishing that you want right there. You can throw a bobber, you can single pole, you can spider rig, you can long line, and today we're throwing crankbaits. We're gonna be running uh, crankbaits out here. We're in uh, a bay, Kentucky Lake. Uh, I, I run cranks a lot. I run them all summer. Uh, started this year when the water temperature was less than 60 degrees. Uh, I'd always use a snap swivel. Uh, I like it uh, for line twist, plus it's a lot easier to change baits on. We we'll just clip it on and uh, we're good to go. We got, uh, we're running four rods on each side, running a 16, a 12, and two sevens. Now what the point is there, we're getting, trying to get four feet of line separation between each, uh, each of the baits to keep from tangling them up. Now it's inevitable, you catch a big drum, a catfish, or even, a lot of times even uh, you know a bass or a crappie are gonna tangle things up. That's just part of it. The other thing is, if, uh, if you've got an aversion to losing crankbaits, you don't need to be pulling cranks for crappie because <laughs> we, we lose a lot of crankbaits and uh, go through them. Uh, I typically, in my boat, will have about 500. Uh, people laugh about it, but I want to, you know, I use a variety of colors, variety of sizes, 
variety of brands. I, you know, I've got several uh, bait companies that sponsor me, and uh, but you know, I just try to use what's working for me at the time. So uh, it's a it's a very effective tactic. We're going to catch some crop. LifeScope is the hottest tech to hit the crappie industry in a generation. And now you can have absolute independent control of your transducer with All Aboard Marine's all-scan electric mounting system. Scan with your transducer in one-degree increments or use its hand control option. With just the flip of a switch, the hybrid control syncs with the movement of your trolling motor or lock it out and use our foot switch. You're in complete control with All Aboard Marine. To find out more, visit allaboardmarine.com. Electronics aren't cheap, and that's why Cornfield Fishing Gear engineers quality mounting equipment that secures your investment and gives you peace of mind. Fish more and worry less with mounting equipment from Cornfield Fishing Gear. Cornfieldfishinggear.com. PTG Outdoors is family owned and sells, installs, and services your favorite electronics, as well as all the tackle you want too. We even service kayaks. Next time you're at Grenada Lake, stop by or find us at ptgoutdoors.com. On the Hook is presented by Ozark Rods in partnership with All Aboard Marine, Cornfield Fishing, Crappie Monster, Driftmaster, and JB's Fish Sauce. Well, Doug, I about got all these line counters set to zero. Yep. Uh, we got them rigged up there with those big. Uh, Four custom crank baits there out of Mississippi, ex-military, right. like the dude. He made me a keychain down there. That's cool. Yeah, uh, but I'm gonna get out of the way. If you don't care, Doug, turn around there and uh, tell the guys watching exactly what it is we got going there. Okay. Uh, we're running uh, ATS Shakespeare reels. These are line counters. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a tip out here right off the bat. A lot of times guys will just drop this bait in the water and, uh, and you know, reset it to zero. I'm a firm believer when I, I want that bait swimming and then I hit my reset because a lot of times people want those poles up at a, at a high, like a 45 degree angle. Okay. Well, you're not taking into account the amount of line from the tip of that rod to the water where that bait's going in. You do that, you raise your rod tip up you let the line out when that bait starts to dive boom you hit your zero then your whatever amount of line is below the surface is what you're wanting to use right. now to expand on what doug's just said there we don't do a lot of crankbaiting here on the show but what we do do we throw bobbers we single pole and now we're crankbaiting spider rigging the key to crappie no matter what technique it is is pattern and repeat Right. And that's the idea behind the line counters. If, we, if we're catching fish at 50 feet of line out, every time we drop straight back to that same 50 feet and that's the elevation the fish are at. Right. You do not want to run these baits all the same distance back either. I, I bury my baits. I'm going to have at least 10 feet difference between each, each one of those baits. Now I may have, I may have 80 feet and 60 and then 70 and then 50. Yeah. But I wanna do that to keep those baits apart and they're running at a different uh, water water table. You know, they're running a different depth. So I'm targeting crappie at different depths because these crappie are not gonna be stacked up all together. They're gonna be, they're gonna be stacked, you know, they're gonna be vertical in the, in the water column. And I'm run, I wanna run a variety of depths at those, at those fish. Now, we, if we go to make a turn, the one thing, one tip I can give you, if you will speed up in your turns, uh, it will help keep these baits apart. But you've got to make wide sweeping turns. 
Uh, if you try to make a tight turn, you're gonna wad everything you got up and you're gonna have a heck of a mess on your hands. I'll bump up two or three tenths and I'll start that turn and that will help keep the separation on those baits. That way when I straighten back out, I know my baits are all separated and we're, we're off and gone again. Okay. So we're gonna make our first big wide sweep here to try and go back through this again. So we wanna, I guess that's one of the biggest reasons I'm having, in my opinion, what Doug was showing me on how to, to set the different lengths on your how much your baits are out, so when you turn, they, one will kind of go under the other, you know, as if you got okay, the longer and shorter. That way they're not But you still want to try and do that wider turn so that you don't get hung up or wadded up is what we and call it, you know. We're, we're actually, we just came across this point and in this turn, I believe Doug was saying, we're gonna be hitting that from a different direction yep. and try to get a reaction bite out of these fish because crankbaiting, as Doug said, we are uh, fishing for the most aggressive fish in the lake when we're crankbaiting. Yep. If we can get on, you know, go over some structure or near some structure, they'll come shooting out of it and smack it like you, you know, Okay. It's, it's a blast. Mark Riddle actually moved to Kentucky to pursue his dream of cornfield fishing gear. They make mounts for all of us. Uh, they make our life a lot easier being out here trying to put fish on the hook. day is unique on the water but pro built jigs has your back no matter your approach whether it's boat flipping long runs dock skipping or just for fun pro built jigs has the hookup for you The Hook is presented by Ozark Rods in partnership with Pro Built Jigs, PTG Outdoors, Skinny Water Marine, and Sore Mouth Tackle. Doug's got us on the map. We're going to come around and uh, get back on our track again. These crappie are very directional. And uh, when if you make a pass in a productive area, you always want to turn back around and go back the opposite direction in that area. Uh, a lot of times it depends on current, it depends on other, you know, the wind direction and all. But if I'm in an area that I think that I'm the fish are there, I'm never going to leave it without going a different, a different okay, give it a different presentation. Exactly. exactly. So one thing about this is yeah, we're trying to target crappie because that's what we love to catch and mostly what we love to put in the fryer. Yep. For me it is. Yep. But I mean, like we said, you can catch catfish, but I've caught bluegill, I've caught, uh, Doug talked about catching a pretty nice red ear here a yeah, while back. Yeah, a red ear, I mean, that ain't gonna make me mad. No, no. <laughs> Last week we had one day, we had seven species that we caught. The first sauger I ever caught was on a crankbait. First one I ever caught on this lake was with Doug on a crankbait. <laughs> yep. Yeah, tell him the whole story. Fish on. Oh, fish on, fish on. What we got? Oh. Oh! That's what we're after right there, boys. Little crappie monster net out there. Let's get this one scooped up. Yes, sir. Bring him straight through those two lines. 
Oh, there man. There, there we go. go. Look at that. There we go. That's a nice one. Let me see that tank. Yeah. Let me get that on up in the boat just a little bit further. All right. See where they saw Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy doesn't know the story. Here, I'll hold the pressure off. I dropped him in there. Okay. That's on a Doug Wynn custom. Hey, uh, get that out of here. Yeah, I can't have that on there. <laughs> oh, that close man. enough, that's a good one. Shoo! Boy, that thing's been eating, too. Yeah, look at that. Look at the back on it. Oh, man. That's a good... That Fall a... Kentucky Lake crappie right there. Right there. That's that's going in a live well. We're gonna put that in the fryer later. Yes, sir. Shoot. Yeah, that, man, that belly. Yeah, he's been putting packing it on, hasn't he? That belly right there. That yeah. dude right there's been out here eating. Man. Yeah, he's packing it on. Fish on. What we got here? What we got? Heavy. Oh, it ain't coming up either. It might be a bad sign. Yeah. Oh, it's quite good. Yeah. Big old cat. There you go. Big old cat. Big old cat. I knew it. <laughs> I got it. Walking. That's fish. That's a catfish. Oh, what do I got going here? Uh, we got some classic. What's that a... What? It... Oh. oh, I believe it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm afraid I won't get him in. No, it's a large mouth. Large mouth. Trash fish. <laughs> Green carp. Well, the fishing's just a little bit slow over here. We've caught three different species, one giant crappie, and crappie's our target fish, so we're gonna try a different bay and see if we can't get into some more of these fish. Now, there's a little thing to this. When you move with the crankbaits, you never completely stop before you get all your rods reeled in or you'll end up all wadded up. So I'm gonna reel each one in and uh, slow down when it comes to the top of water or that thing will end up uh, popping out of there and that's how people get hooked inside of the face. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a giant there something. It feels like crappie. What is that? Uh, oh, rolling razor blade. That's yeah. a awesome, though. Be careful with that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it got us a little yellow bass. Actually known as the rolling razor blades. There you go. Ooh, those things are mean. Oh, they're mean, and when you touch them, they automatically oh, yeah. so look like a dog on puffer like fish. Razor blades and and uh, the fins are like needles. They're not bad to eat, though. I've cut. I've, great to eat. I've, yeah, a lot of people like them to I've eat. I've cut them up with the crappie and fried them up. They're good. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's a very yeah, nice that's one. That's a pretty good size. That's another different species. Yeah. Right here, trolling crankbaits. It's everything you. I, I I tend to catch those quite a bit vertical jig, and I think those kind of <laughs> hang out with the crappie. So, you know, there's a chance. They will sure set up exactly the same on a piece of timber. Yeah. Mark, whatever fish we've caught today has been a different species, <laughs> but the one thing about it, it they've all been extremely healthy. Go. Oh, that's coming up too. There you go. Now we're talking. Another one. Another yellow bass. I'll tell you what, the yellow bass is really liking that color now. Yeah. This one's uh, hooked about right to get me right through the fingers, too. Another uh, yellow bass, and that dude right there is healthy. The filet you get off of them is not going to be like a crappie filet, but when I'm running the fryer, those little chips like that, they don't make it to the table. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. One of the things we're doing today, we're going with the current. With the current. So you might think about that if you have a lake that's got current or you got a lake that's got a little wind, 
if that fish is staying behind something or in a cut or something to stay out of the current or what the wind's pushing, but that bait fish is small, it's getting moved with the current. It's just getting so that, right that crappie sitting there, heading into the current, heading into the wind, waiting for something to come by. And yeah. that's what we're trying to do is bring it by him. And get that reaction. Bite. Yep, there'll be a, that reaction. Doug, how do you tune one of these crankbaits to get it to swim like you, you're talking about you need it to do? I'm gonna be watching watching these baits. And if I have a bait that's running, say, if I'm looking back and that bait is running toward the right, I'm gonna take the bait and I'm gonna turn this part, I'm gonna turn it the direction that it's running, just a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot. Facing the crankbait, you're twisting it right or left facing the crankbait. When I look and I see that crankbait is moving, say if it's moving to the right, I bring it in just like, just like this and I, I know that I've got to move it just a little bit just a little bit, the direction that it's moving. We didn't, I don't think we fit. Oh boy, oh. Oh, that's heavy, oh, that's heavy. It's coming up off the that's far it. back, come on, baby. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, come here. Come on. Come on, baby. That was a heavy one, I thought it was a catfish. Oh. Is it a cat? No. Oh. Boom. <laughs> there it is again, <laughs> that red one, man, that's I'm telling you. Same that's same crankbait. That's my. My go to out here. That's same crankbait. Once these fish decide what they want, they want the exact same thing every single time, pattern and repeat. And he's got the only one of them big four crankbaits that's colored that way right now. And I, he, bet you, I bet you have some here for too long. I won't bet you? you it won't be very long at all. I'll have some more of them. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Different color this time. Different color this time. Oh. Oh, toad. <laughs> toad. There's a good one. There is a good, let me get it inside this boat here. He got the front hook this time. Got the front, we slowed down. Yeah. Captain had to call that one. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Got this. That's that black one you stole from me a while yeah, ago. That's that dark one we were talking about. I'm gonna try that out. It's kinda. It's kinda cool. It's got the sparkle yeah, in it. Yeah, it got with a little sparkle, black. yeah, it's black, yeah. You never know. Get the lure there you go. You gotta get the crankbait in. You gotta get it's that crankbait the crank in there, bait. man. And that's the one that had uh, 80 feet of line on it too. 80 out. <laughs> yeah, that 80 out. And it's a complete different. Complete different crankbait. Yeah, all, all real black, dark, 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 dark color. Man, <laughs> I believe we got us some fish to clean. Somebody has, somebody got some work to do. Yes, sir. Doug, I appreciate you coming out here with me today. Yeah, you and Mark both, man. Thanks for having uh, us. Glad to, both of you local here. Uh, well, I guess I kinda am now too. Yeah, you're not too far <laughs> away now. I ain't that far yeah, away, man. but. I love this place. Y'all have taught me a lot about pulling crankbaits and a lot about Kentucky Lake. Uh, and I appreciate y'all coming out here. It's a great place, great place to come and visit. Maybe come down and live, that's what I did. A lot of there good go. people here, you know, yep. and um, we uh, are welcoming people and uh, we, we want everybody that comes here to catch fish. Yeah. So, you know, that's, a, that's the whole deal. And that goes for all the businesses. I mean, the businesses know that their bread and butter is right here on this uh, lake. Everybody's so. been really supportive. Well, yeah. there's a, there are a lot of great resorts on this lake. It's a good vacation place and we love for people to come down. Yeah, yep. well, again, I appreciate it. Guys, right here, Captain Doug Wynn of Crappie Gills and More. You can get a hold to him there on Facebook or we'll put you a link up for his phone number. We got Mr. Mark Riddle right here, Cornfield uh, Fishing Gear. And uh, guys, that's gonna be pretty well wrapped for this week. Make sure and tune in right here next week, guys. We're gonna be coming at you with another episode from a totally different lake, and we're gonna show you how to put those hammers on the hook.